Hello there, this is Rupesh and you are watching CVPNuts video series on C++ and in this video we will be learning about static cast. So in previous video we saw that how to use const cast and where to use and where we should not use that. And in this video we will be learning about static cast and I have almost 5 to 6 points here to discuss. So let's start it. So this is the first demonstration program here. I need to uncomment that and uh, it tells that it performs implicit conversion between types. So implicit conversion is like what generally C++ or C compiler does when you are typecasting integer to point, uh, I mean integer to float and float to integer and integer to character and character to integer. Okay. So those things comes under implicit conversions and we should always use static cast in order to do that. Okay. So I have given this normal implicit cast and this is our static cast both are doing the same thing but let's suppose your program is failing somewhere and you want to check where am i doing all those implicit cast so searching this line in whole bunch of code is really very really hard so that's why we should use static cast in that case so you can just search it okay otherwise both will be doing the same thing but this is explicit message that i am using static cast and static means this type casting will happen at compile time it won't go at run time okay so it will check whether i can type cast f which is a float point into a which is of integer point okay and i have given this comment you read it out okay so this was the first point we should use static cast okay let's go for the second point and second point tells that Use a static when conversion between type is provided through either conversion operator or conversion constructor. So we will see that here. If you don't know what is conversion operator and conversion constructor, we'll learn here. Okay. So we are having this integer class. This class is taking integer as a value. This class has an integer x as a data member. And we have this object here. These two lines are very important. Okay, here we are using a conversion operator. See, you are initializing object of type integer inside string. How is it possible? Both are not equal, right? But still, if you will compile this code, it will compile without any problem. Okay, let's check that. See, it has compiled without any problem. And why this is happening? Because we have this conversion operator here. Okay. We are initializing into a string. That's why we are having conversion operator for string. If you want to initialize your class object to something else than string, you have to provide the conversion operator for that as well. Okay. So object is being initialized to string data type. Okay. So this function is being called. We are type casting X into string and passing and that X is getting initialized into this one. And this is also a weird thing. This is talking about the concept called conversion constructor. The rule of conversion operator, sorry, conversion constructor tells that if your class has any constructor with one parameter and you are initializing the same data type parameter into the object, we will call that constructor. Okay. So let's print the message here like what is getting called at what time so this is conversion constructor and next one is here this is conversion operator okay so we will compile this and we'll check what is being called at what time see conversion operator conversion constructor so the first thing is conversion operator okay so this was called i told you sorry this one Okay, but why we are discussing everything here? The reason is we know what will be called at what time here. But here, if somebody is looking at your code, they won't be able to understand it much because they don't know what type of casting is happening. And this is a compile time casting. So you should always use static cast for that. Okay, so this first expression should look like this one. And this second expression should look like this one. Okay. Ultimately, this assignment is also doing the same thing what we are writing here, but we should explicitly write that. Okay. So the reviewer or 
somebody else is looking at your code after 10 years, they will be able to know or even in debugging phase, it is really very important if you want to find where all those static casts are happening. Okay. So here also we should use static cast, both the cases, conversion operator and conversion constructor. Okay. So this was our second point. Let's move to the third point. Third point tells static cast is more restrictive than C style cast. And let's see why I am telling like that. Because character pointer to integer pointer is allowed in C, but not with static cast. And this is really a very dangerous cast. If you are casting character pointer into integer pointer, it means that you have a character pointer which is pointing to one byte memory location and you are type casting that one byte memory location to four byte memory location. Now, if you will use this to write into memory, it will write four bytes. So that's the example here. See, we have a character C type casted that address into integer pointer and you are updating that integer pointer, which is a four byte with five. So what it will do, we'll see with this diagram here. You have memory like this and you have somewhere this address of C, which is one byte. Okay. Now what you're doing, you're typecasting that address into integer pointer. So what this will do, it is like now you are pointing to the same memory location, but now you are having four bytes into your consideration. So if you will use this pointer, which is this P pointer and initialize five, what compiler will do? Compiler will initialize five on all these four bytes. So it's like it will initialize zero, 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 one, zero, one, like this. And what you're doing here is you was allowed for this particular block, but with the help of typecasting, which is this one, you, you got access to the nearest bytes also, which was not allowed for you. So in this case, you might corrupt your memory. You can go to segmentation for lots of things are possible, but that's not the point here. The point is your C style casting. This one allows this. You should be getting error for this, right? But no, your C style casting is allowing this. But if you will use C++ style casting, this is not going to allow that. Okay. These two things are exactly equal. I mean, your type casting character pointer here to integer pointer. And the same thing is happening here. You're type casting character pointer into integer pointer. Okay. But this is C style casting. This is C++ style casting. And this won't allow. I mean, this won't compile, whereas this will successfully compile. See, I have given the comment here, pass at compile time, but fail at runtime. I mean, this might fail or might not fail. It depends what address it is accessing. Is it allowed to access and all that? But this is a danger thing. And this is telling like it will fail compile time only. Okay because both pointers are not compatible pointer types. Okay. So C++ cast avoid so many dangerous casting what C allows. Okay. So this was the third point. You will notice that this part was compiled. See, there is no error. The error is here. Invalid static cast from character pointer to integer pointer. This one, but this one has compiled successfully. So if you will comment this part, like this and we will go again and compile that see it has compiled successfully okay whereas this is a big problem so you got the proof now let's look at the fourth point fourth point tells it won't allow to typecast your derived into private base pointer okay i mean if you are using static cast it won't allow but if you are using again the c style casting it will allow and that is dangerous i mean that is not allowed ca cast but still using c style casting you can achieve that this is your derived class you have inherited base as private okay so let's compile this and you will get the error for that see base is inaccessible base of derived okay because you are having private here 
if you will write public, let's write public and re recompile this. See, compiled. No problem at all. So, if you will write private here, this won't allow your code to compile. So, this was the fourth point. Let's look at the fifth point. I hope you are not tired of looking points here. So, fifth point tells that use for all upcast but never use for confused downcast. So, we'll see what do I mean by that. So, here in this code, we have this base class. We are initializing base into derived 1 and derived 2. So, this is something like this. Base, this is d1 and this is d2. So, we have these two objects, derived 1 and derived 2. Now, you are typecasting derived 1 object into base, b base pointer 1. And same thing, derived 2 address into base pointer 2. So, this is allowed because you are going from here to here. And in second case, you are going from here to here. So, we know that we can typecast it like this. Okay. So, this is also perfect code. This is also perfect code. But the problem lies here. What you are trying to do is, after typecasting into upcast like this, you are again coming back. But while you are coming back from here to here, you are just switching. So, base pointer 2, which was holding derived 2, is initialized to derived 1 pointer. Okay. See, derived 1. So, now from here to you are again coming back like this and this. Now, here you are initializing D2 and here you are initializing D1. Okay. So, D2 is initialized inside D1 type and D1 is initialized into D2 type here. Okay. And this is compiling. So, this point is not about where you should use static cast. This point is about where you should not use static cast. You should not use static cast if you don't know what your pointer is holding. So, you might type cast it wrongly. Okay. So, that's why I told never use for confused down cast. If you would compile this, this will compile successfully. Okay. See, and this is the problem. You can see that. So, this should not happen and you should use dynamic cast for that and I will give a separate lecture on that. Okay. So, this was fifth point. Let's look at the sixth point and maybe that is the last point. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. You can go home. No problem. And sixth point tells that you should use static cast whenever you are casting to void pointer or from void pointer. So, let's see what is that. So, you got this i is equal to 10. You are type casting address of i into void pointer. Then, you should use static cast. If you are type casting any void pointer to some another pointer like this, then also you should use static cast. Okay. Why? Because there is a predefined rule for converting anything into a void pointer and that knows how to convert any pointer to void pointer. Okay. Because this is generic pointer. So, there is a standard way of doing this. And this is obviously a compile time check. So, you should use static cast. Okay. So, this is also a point here and maybe I don't have any point. So, let's look at the bottom lines. Bottom line says that for compatible type conversion such as flow to integer. So, you should use static for this purpose. We saw this in first point. Second point is for conversion operator and conversion constructor. We saw that in second point to avoid unrelated pointer conversion. We saw this in third point where we were typecasting character point to into integer pointer. Okay. And fourth is avoid derived to private base pointer conversion. We saw this as well. And use for all upcast but never use for confused down cast because there is no runtime check performed for static cast conversion. Because static means it will be happening at compile time. There is no runtime check here. Okay. Runtime check happens with dynamic cast. We will see that in upcoming videos. And by the time you are watching this video, maybe it is already there. So check out the description field. And sixth point is intents are more clear in C style cast. And sixth is finding is easy. Like if you want to find where you are doing all static cast, you can just easily find that. But in case of C style casting, it is nearly impossible until unless you are using some kind of regular expression or something to find that. And maybe you won't be able to find that. And eighth 
is error finding at compile time. Yeah. If you are using static cast, it means you want to check everything at compile time itself. Okay. So generally experienced people tell that this is the first cast you should always go for. If it is not compiling, then think twice and go for other cast. Okay. So I think we are done here. So let's look at the next video, which is maybe about reinterpret cast or dynamic cast. I don't know. You will get the link in the description field. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.